Hey guys, Abdul Wahab here and I am going to present multiple access and modulation in 5G. Presentation layout, OFDM techniques for 5G, NOMA and how it works, advantages of NOMA and conclusion. Overview of 5G. 5th generation wireless network faced various challenges in order to support large scale heterogeneous traffic and users. Therefore, new modulation and multiple access schemes are being developed. To meet the changing demands as this research space is ever increasing, it becomes more important to analyze the various approaches. So I'm gonna present comprehensive overview of the most promising modulation and multiple access scheme for 5G, which are OMA and NOMA. OFDM orthogonal frequency deviation multiplexing for 5G. It is an efficient modulation format used in modern wireless communication systems including 5G. However, traditional OFDM is unable to meet the requirements and demands of 5G networks. For example, in MMTC scenario, sensor nodes usually transmit different types of data asynchronously in narrow bands while OFDM requires different users to be highly synchronized otherwise there will be large interference among adjacent subbands. 5G network should support three major families of applications. The first one is EMBB enhanced mobile broadband is in simple terms. EMBB will provide the greater capacity necessary to support peak data rates. The second one is MMTC massive machine type communication. It is a new service category for 5G that can support extremely high connection density of online devices. The third one is UR LLC is an ultra reliable low latency communication uh, specified by 3GPP release 15 used in factory automation, autonomous driving, smart grid, etc. Demand for 5G As we know the demand on cellular mobile communication is increasing rapidly. Each 10 years we have a new generation 2G in 1990, 3G in 2000, 4G in 2010 and 5G in 2020. As the dramatic increase in mobile users and wireless devices is anticipated, we are requiring a lot more data rates to fulfill the need. We need faster internet because the driving factor for this is the emerging of applications like uh, real-time video applications, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram and most importantly the trending video application is TikTok. As these applications are focusing on videos, there are two challenges. The first one is the speed of the internet and data rate and the second one is the storage. As most of the people want to convey their messages over videos like online lectures, this is the trend not by text anymore. By IoT, Internet of Things, we are connecting each and everything subject and object with our ease. It can communicate with the network. In that case, our network resources are going to be exhausted for sure due to interference. In that case, we are going to do is to talk about NOMA. NOMA is the technique which has the ability to connect more devices beyond the resources we have. What 5G gonna look like? Reliable connection anytime and anywhere. Just like machine to machine, device to device communication, internet of things communication, internet of vehicles communication, real time video, mobile gaming and we are gonna need lower latency for this and high energy efficiency, green systems but mainly the ability to serve in finite number of users within the limited resources we have. How 5G gonna do that? So 5G is aiming to satisfy these requirements by using dense microcells. Dense microcells mean using instead of 3 cells in one area you are gonna use 10 cells now. And the whole spectrum is allocated to each cell. We have relay stations. Relay station is basically a radio station that receives radio signals and retransmits them in order to extend their range. And the third one is massive MIMO. Massive MIMO basically massive multiple input and multiple output is the technology that provides uniformly good service to wireless terminals in high mobility environment. Typically 64 to 128 antennas have been used in MIMO base stations. In the beam forming antenna pattern 
Beamforming is a traffic signaling system for cellular base stations that identifies the most efficient data delivery route to a particular user and it reduces interference for nearby users in the process. The fifth one is using millimeter waves frequency bands above 10 GHz. In order to increase the bandwidth of our system and therefore increase the data rate to more than 10 GHz, that can be satisfied by the user who are requiring HD video real-time gaming and uh, streaming these hungry uh, data hungry applications. We are going to discuss NOMA, non-orthogonal multiple access. Each one of these is a targeting one specific requirement or a couple of them for NOMA. The main target is to provide ability to serve more users than the resources we have. Orthogonal versus non-orthogonal multiple access. Let's go back in time and talk about the previous generations. What were the multiple access technology is there? So if we talk about 2G, remember with each other the accessing technology was FTM plus TD. Divide the user in frequency as well as in time with no overlapping, having transmission of data synchronously like there was no overlapping between the pulses. In 3G, we have CDMA. We assign cores to users. However, when we increase the number of cores, to beyond the certain value then interference become very worse and things started getting bad and we can't handle the interference properly if we talk about 4g we use ofdma which is basically 2g with overlapping in ofdma you split your resources which are patterned into small slots and assigned these slots based on their requirements in a process called schedule in general, all these users are allocated orthogonal resources, separate time slots and separate frequency allocation. In order to reduce inter-user interference, inter-user interference is basically the interference in communication when several body sensors uh, BSN operate in same vicinity. Fast growth in mobile devices versus limited available spectrum this is the struggle this is the main challenge we have right now here so to handle this struggle noma is came into picture so noma we don't care about the interference at the transmitter between the users you basically let the user uh, let the user share the same time same frequency and their signals are top of each other fully overlap in that case how we are going to remove the interference here is the work to intelligently remove the interference of other users into each other signals so that each user get his data reliably without any degradation or any problems let's talk about whole normal words we have two users let's assume two users here one is close to the base station and we call it a near user and one is far from the base station we call it a far user both of these are selected carefully in such a way that there is enough distance between them the near user have strong channel gain similarly far user have weak channel gain okay so both of them are served with same time and same frequency so the base station allocated low power to the user near to the base station and high power to the user far from the base station the transmission power is basically split between them okay because of obvious reason that the higher power is required the signal to reach the far user and conversely for the near user what we are getting here is two users at top of each other in the uh, diagram which is blue and uh, yellow basically they are uh, with the top of each other and uh, are getting overlapped so obviously we will get interference it is a representation of modulated digital signal it helps us to define the amplitude and phase of a single element we mainly focus on the amplitude shift king and phase shift king 
on the left is the conventional constellation diagram but on the right each red dot is representing a two bit pattern of a single signal like uh, 00 10 0, 01 and 11 as we know that both users are combined like user 1 is top of user 2 and in this figure red dot is representing the near user and white dot is representing the far user and it is defining the shape of the signal may be a sine wave and uh, uh, 4 point are due to the QPSK but they have a specific distance from the origin which is the base station. Let me tell you how it works. User 2 signal has small interference from the user 1 because when it is reaching the user 2, user 1 got vanished in the path loss due to its less power. Due to this reason, user 2 decodes its data normally, suffering from slightly interference but that's not significant. But there is a problem with the user 1 decoding its data. As it is getting the composite signal of user 1 and user 2 having low and high power signal combined. User 1 decodes user 2 signal with high power first from the incoming composite signal. Subtract the interference which is coming from user 2 signal from this composite signal and after that user 1 decodes its data from the remaining signal. Not that far user is unable to cancel near user interference because, because it is too weak to be decoded. Here is the block diagram representation of near and far user processing data from the composite signal. Far user processing normal signal enters by ignoring the interference far user signal decoding far user data. For near user processing normal signal enters far user signal decoding reconstruct far user signal subtract the far user signal from the normal signal and uh, at the end near user signal decode its data so this is the procedure we must go to the mathematical analysis to ensure the gain of our expectations or some comprehensive simulation in order to check the exact amount of tvs or data rate or bit error rate now the performance is measured for the norma in terms of capacity channel capacity from the shannon equation channel capacity is equal to the bandwidth log of 1 plus SNR bits by second where SNR is signal to noise ratio at the receiver and it gives us bits by second the achievable dead rate. Note that the channel has a higher impact on capacity than SNR. The OMA takes half the bandwidth but with no interference and complexity is low we don't need the successive interference cancellation and each user gets its data. The signal to noise ratio for the near user is equal to the power of the near over noise and SNR for far is equal to the power of the far over noise. In case of NOMA, near user can cancel far user signal but far user can't cancel near user signal. Okay. The SNR for the near in case of NOMA is equal to the power of the near over noise and SNR for the far is equal to the power of the far over power of the near plus noise because by reaching to the other user it will also take the power of the near one. These are two Shannon's equation and we are going to implement these equations in the MATLAB and uh, see the results of for the NOMA and OMA. The trade off means basically losing of power of one to facilitate the other user. Okay, this is the MATLAB code D1 is equal to 1000, D2 is equal to 500 meters. It is basically the distance of user from base station and uh, their power allocation factors A1 is equal to 0.75 and A2 is equal to 0.25 for the near user. Okay, the first graph in the plot between the bit rate of user 2 and the bit rate of user 1 on the x axis. The red line is representing the NOMA and blue line is representing the OMA. We can say that at any point of this graph, the bit per second of the NOMA, the red line, which is basically a measure of data transmission speed, the amount of bits transferred in a single second is always greater than the OMA. 
moving on to the next graph which is having outage probability on the y axis the outage probability which is basically the point at which receiver power value falls below the threshold we can say that the receiver is out of range of the base station in cellular communication by increasing the power the signal is getting inside the range of the base station and outage probability is decreasing gradually in 2015 noma is accepted for the down leg on the release 14 under the name must was adopted multi user superposition transmission research point being considered in 3 gpp third generation partnership project user pairing selection uh, which means uh, user you can select them and serve them with noma power sharing sharing ratio means the ratio of the power assigned to each user multiple antennas coexistence now in 2019 just recently they got uh, started investigation noma for the uplink uh, in the uplink you have each user sending his data to the base station immediately like using the same time and same frequency resources this technique requires some more improvement first make it applicable for any user located in any location second we want our user to decode data immediately without any external processing it may be at the transmitter but uh, when it finally reaches the receiver it should be uh, decodable noma is based on sharing resources between users sharing allows higher sum of data rate can help increase numbers if user and hide data rate adopt as a candidate for 5g consider research is going on to put it into practice